following video presentation is an output of the CFC EU financed project on protected agriculture being implemented by CARDI in Haiti, Jamaica and Trinidad and Tobago to assist PA production of vegetables and herbs in the Caribbean. Most crops are 80 to 95% water. Most of this water is lost from plant systems through transpiration via the stomata. Transpiration promotes crop cooling and carbon dioxide exchange. Water lost must be readily replaced. Greenhouse crops require a very good source of high quality water. Water used for agriculture must be tested for the presence of elements such as sodium, chlorine, boron and calcium. Checks should also be made for waterborne pathogens, particularly those that can cause plant diseases. Water used for drinking might not be suitable for growing crops in a greenhouse due to high levels of chlorine, which can cause root death and necrosis of leaves, especially in hydroponic systems. Every effort must be made to guarantee a good supply of high quality water. Rivers, streams, gullies, wells, natural and artificially constructed ponds, concrete tanks and plastic tanks are also used as sources of water for greenhouses. The harvesting of rainwater from the greenhouse roof provides a good source of high quality water. Note however that newly constructed concrete tanks used as storage will produce water with very high pH as a result of contamination of the water caused by the cement. The alkalinity or the measure of the dissolved carbonate, bicarbonates and hydroxides in the irrigation water must be taken into account as this feature of the water will help to determine the availability of fertilizers as well as the efficiency of several pesticides and stimulants that may be used on the crop. Water within the air surrounding the plant canopy must also be taken into account due to the effect that it has on the plant. Relative humidity is expressed as a percentage and may be calculated by dividing the amount of water in the air by the amount of water the air could hold at constant temperature and pressure. Growing media is a very important part of the production system. The growing media within several regional greenhouses still ranges from soil, organic matter mixes, non-soil media, combination of several non-soil mixes, and water as is used in NFT hydroponics. Some growers are now growing in non-soil media due to problems with soil such as nematodes, soil pathogens, poor drainage and pH related issues. The transition to soilless media is relatively slow due to the high cost and limited availability of most non-soil media. Despite the media selected for use, it should have the following characteristics. Good aeration, good drainage, free from material having sharp edges, free from pathogens, free from harmful chemicals, have a low EC, have a near neutral pH, and have a good cation exchange capacity. Disadvantages to using soilless media are its high cost, relative unavailability, and the high level of knowledge and instrumentation that is required to monitor and operate in these systems efficiently. Core, coconut fiber, is the most popular growing medium being used by farmers within the region. Large volumes of the product is not produced within the region and is oftentimes imported from countries such as Indonesia, India and Sri Lanka. Coconut fiber may have high initial levels of sodium and chlorine which require leaching or flushing before use. The material will absorb large amounts of nitrogen from the fertilizer feed during the early phase of its decomposition and the grower must compensate for this loss by using more nitrogen in the fertilizer feed or by supplemental foliar applications of the nitrogen sprayed onto the plant. Perlite is made from volcanic rocks heated to very high temperatures, as high as 1800 degrees Fahrenheit, until it expands to form white, light, fluffy, popcorn-looking particles made up of closed air-filled cells. Perlite possesses large pore size, good aeration, is lightweight and holds water loosely to its outer surface. It is chemically inert and has a negligible CEC and a near neutral pH of 7.5. Particles of perlite can range from small to large. 
The grower must select the perlite of the required size based on the anticipated use. As perlite ages, it disintegrates into progressively smaller particles. In EBB and flow hydroponic systems, where medium to large perlite is preferred, fragmented particles often get deposited at the bottom of the growing channel, causing obstruction to the nutrient flow. These deposits can be eliminated from the system by removing the perlite from the system and using a mesh to separate these smaller particles from the larger ones. Algae growth and buildup can also be present within the perlite medium. The level of growth and buildup is directly related to the amount of nutrient that is exposed to sunlight. If the perlite is applied too thinly, less than 4 inches deep, then sunlight will penetrate it and get to the nutrient film on the surface of the channel, resulting in the growth of algae. The dust inhaled from dry perlite, especially when new, is bad for your health, and you must wear a respirator or dust mask when handling the product. Periodically wetting the material with a fine spray of water will help to reduce this dust. Sand has long been used as a propagation medium for cuttings of several horticultural plants and to germinate several kinds of seeds. Using sand as a hydroponic growing medium in the region has been long in the making but has not yet gained prominence. Major disadvantages to using sand are its weight and the great possibility of being infested by nematodes. Sand is a good additive to both soil and non-soil media as it helps to improve aeration and drainage. Sand culture is presently a worthwhile alternative to more expensive and frequently unavailable soilless growing media. Peat is partially decomposed vegetation, where the decay has been slowed by wet and cold conditions. Peat is only found in very small pockets on a few islands within the tropical region as the high temperatures are not conducive for the formation. In cold areas such as North America and Canada, peat can be found in large quantities where it is used as amend soils and to manufacture potting materials. Rock wool is an inert, porous, sterile product made from rocks heated to high temperatures and formed into fibers. The fibers are then made into slabs. Rock wool is slightly alkaline, has a very low CEC, and holds water relatively well. The bags are reusable up to three crops, providing they were not contaminated by root pathogens. Extended use up to six years of the rock wool may be gained by steam treating and rewrapping the rock wool. Rock wool is very expensive, and even disposal of used rock wool incurs further costs. Fertigation is by far the most popular method used to supply fertilizer feed to greenhouse plants. It involves applying fertilizer dissolved in the irrigation water directly to the root zone of each plant. Plants growing directly in soils or in the various forms of artificial growing media may be fed using this method. Fertigation is an accurate and efficient method of applying nutrients and certain pesticides to the plant. Critical to the proper functioning of the fertigation system is the adherence to a strict maintenance schedule where the system is checked at least once per week to ensure the system is delivering the correct volume in a given time. Check lines, filters, emitters, valves, reservoirs, etc. for leaks and blockages. Fertigation delivery lines and filters must be flushed once per week. If more frequent flushing is required, a detailed analysis of the fertilizer feed, water source and quality is required. Water delivered to the crop may be done using various types of irrigation systems. The grower must meet crop watering needs, select an economical and efficient irrigation method that is safe to the user, the public and the environment.
Top-down irrigation refers to when plants are irrigated from above the foliage, using sprayer or when water is applied to the top of the growing media by hand or drip lines. The downward movement of solution causes leaching of excess salts out of the root zone. Top-down irrigation systems facilitate for 10% of the solution applied to be drained from the bottom of the container. Misting and fogging, when used in tropical greenhouses, function primarily to lower internal temperatures and raise relative humidity, and not so much to provide irrigation. Limiting mist and fog applications also limits the development of several leaf and stem diseases. Sprayers can provide sufficient solution to provide plants with fertilizer, but they too wet leaves and as such are not the best option for fertilizer application within tropical greenhouses. Trickle tubes extend from main lines to the surface of the substrate of the individual plant in containers or to the root zone of plants grown in beds. Ideally, the leaves of the plants are not wet during irrigation. Drip pegs or stakes are recommended for use in this application to deliver the solution below the surface of the growing medium. Nutrition solutions applied to the surface of the growing medium, such as with spray stakes, encourage the growth of algae on top of the media. In this method, plants are irrigated from below, through capillary uptake or flooding. Dry or partially dry substrate will draw water upwards when the lower portion of the substrate is in contact with the water. This is referred to as capillary uptake. The success of the capillary uptake depends on the number of capillary spaces within the media. Growing media with very large air spaces do not facilitate capillary action and would require amendment to reduce the spaces between particles. Capillary mats used in seedling nurseries provide the seedlings with irrigation from below as their roots grow down towards water or nutrients. The system is helpful as it encourages the early downward growth of roots and no water touches the foliage of the seedlings.